I'm Jason Hudson from Tenzig Technology and today we're going to look at creating a more secure environment for our Tenzig Windows 10 Thin Clients. We are going to use the Tenzig Universal Write Filter or UWF Wizard for this that comes as part of the Windows Tenzig Client Build. You may remember I demonstrated part of the UWF in a previous video related to security when I showed you how to create a custom shell for a specific user to launch a WVD connection at boot up and log on. I've put a link to that video in the description below. I'm going to give a brief overview of the Tenzig UWF wizard and then we'll explore some of the features in more detail and I'll give you specific examples of how to use these in your own environment. On our Tenzig Windows client desktop, if we show hidden icons at the bottom right of our screen, we can see the UWF wizard icon in there. And if we right click on it, we have the option to select the configuration item. So we'll click this and the UWF wizard will be displayed. Just taking a look at the main screen, we can see the status of the UWF itself and also the user specific shell launcher options that I mentioned in a previous how to video. We can see its status and also the status of the keyboard filter that we'll touch on shortly. The custom shells tab shows us user or group specific shells that we have set up. Remember, creating a custom shell gives us the ability to launch our user's desktop to run a single application at login so that our end users only get access to what they need and nothing more. It also gives your system engineers and administrators a more controlled and secure desktop environment to set up and manage. Inside the exclusion list screen, we have the ability to add or remove excluded access to particular files or folders and also have the ability to prevent access to any registry keys that we specify. There are also options to allow Windows updates to be carried out that will automatically disable and then re-enable the UWF in the process. The overlay settings are where we can fine tune the Windows UWF itself. We can specify the type of overlay required and any thresholds that the OS needs to work with. We can also get alerts sent to the event logs if any of these thresholds are met. In the Welcome Lock Boot Screens tab, we have the ability to enable or disable certain screen experiences, such as welcome screen animations, lock and boot options, and even fine tune the welcome screen content. Notice there are three keyboard filter tabs that give us greater control over how our users can interact with the OS and any specific application related keyboard shortcuts. We can, for example, prevent users from using Control Alt Delete and thus prevent them from accessing and interacting with the login screen. One of the tabs is specific to any Windows shell keys on your client, but we also have the ability to disable any of these restrictions for our administrators because we might still want them to have full keyboard access. If we go back to the UWF status screen, we can see a list of status options in the right hand window. You may be aware that the UWF is part of Windows 10 OS and was designed to provide a clean experience for thin clients and workspaces that have frequent guests like schools, library or hotel computers. Guests can work, change settings and install software. After the device reboots, the next guest receives a clean experience. It increases security and reliability for kiosks, IoT embedded devices, or other devices where new apps are not expected to be frequently added. If I move to the Overlay Settings tab, you can choose where the overlay is stored, RAM or disk, how much space is reserved, and what happens when the overlay fills up. If we choose to store the virtual overlay in RAM, then this is cleared during a reboot and has the benefit of being able to reduce the wear on write sensitive media like solid state drives. For RAM overlays, you'll need to budget some RAM for the system. If the OS requires 2 gig of RAM and your device has 4 gig, then set the maximum size of the overlay to 2 gigabytes or less. We recommend enabling UWF on a test device, installing the necessary apps and putting the device through usage simulations. 
If you choose to store the virtual overlay on disk, then it's stored in a temporary location on the drive, and by default, the overlay is cleared on reboot. Notice that we have warning and critical thresholds set here that will give our users a warning each time one of these is hit. In our example, once our limit reaches 512 megabytes of free space left, then we get a warning message sent to the Windows event log. And once it reaches one gigabyte, we will get a message stating we are extremely low on space for the overlay. If we want to see updates on the status of the UWF, we can switch the filter on by clicking Enable UWF on the main status screen and answering yes to the reboot thin client question. We are informed that the filter is enabled and if we click OK, the thin client will reboot. Once the client has rebooted, if we go back to show hidden icons, then we notice that the UWF wizard icon has now changed colour to red and that the status shows the UWF itself is enabled. If we go back into the configuration screen again, we can now see that the consumption status is no longer zero and that we are actually using the physical RAM as storage in this session. If we click on the exclusion list tab, we can choose certain files or folders and tell the UWF that we wish to exclude them from being touched by the filter. This means that if we write to that file or folder, then it will be persistent and remain on the disk after a reboot. One important thing to remember, if you want to make any change to the drive, then you will have to disable the UWF before doing so. Otherwise, any changes you make while the filter is on may discard them during a reboot. I'll just give you an example of what happens if you change the content of a folder on the C drive while the filter is enabled. I'm going to create a file in the temp folder on C, and then once I've done that, I'll reboot the client and we'll see what has happened to the file when it boots back up. Now that the client has rebooted, we can browse to the temp folder and take a look inside. Notice that our file no longer exists. So to make it permanent, we need to go to the exclusion list tab, click on browse to our directory, find the folder named temp on C, and then click OK. We then click Add Exclusion, and once the message appears, click Yes, and the thin client will reboot again. Now that the client has rebooted, we are going to place a text file in the temp folder on C again, and reboot the client once more. Once the client has rebooted, if we open our Explorer window and look inside the temp folder, notice that the UWF exclusion is working and that our text file still remains. Remember that any changes to the UWF will require a reboot, especially if you're enabling and disabling the state of it. One location that you might want to exclude from the UWF is the Windows Defender folder and its contents. Preventing writes to this location could be harmful, as any new virus definitions won't be saved to disk unless you exclude it. I'm going to add another exclusion for this by browsing to the folder C colon backslash program data. Microsoft and then Windows Defender. Once selected, click the Add Exclusion button again and answer Yes to reboot the thin client as we did before. Just as we were able to exclude files and folders from the UWF, we can also do the same with the registry and get UWF to bypass any entries that we specify. To exclude a specific registry key from UWF, go back into the Exclusions list in the UWF wizard 
and simply type or paste in any registry key. I'm using HKey Local Machine backslash software backslash AMD. Click Add Exclusion. It will be added to the exclusion list and you'll be asked to reboot the client again. So click Yes to save and reboot the endpoint. Even though we have the UWF wizard, we also have the ability to query the settings of the UWF using the command line to get an overall picture of what is actually being filtered or bypassed. If we open a command prompt and type in UWFMGR space get hyphen config and press enter, we can see the state of the filter which in our case is switched on and any overlay setting that we specified and also any volume or registry exclusions. We can also use it to see any pending changes prior to a reboot. You can see these indicated by the next session settings title. We'll close the command window and go back into the UWF wizard again. If you select the welcome lock boot screens tab from the top bar, then you'll be able to modify the look and feel of the Windows experience for these particular screens. We'll just cover a few of the configuration options that are displayed on this screen, and I'll give you some examples of how they modify the screen content for the actual device too. It's worth noting that the modification options in here and in the next keyboard filter sections are not a part of the Windows UWF, but are still useful for anyone wishing to further lock down the Windows Thin client. If I move down to the lock screen section, select disable lock screen in the list and then click enable, I get the message stating that the lock screen is now disabled. Disabling the lock screen just saves us time and stops us having to unlock the screen before we can sign in every time it's locked. If I click OK, we can see what has happened here. If I now hit Control, Alt and Delete and then click Lock, notice the display doesn't show the standard lock screen with the date and time, but just shows us our login box. If I go back in and set the Disable Lock Screen to Disabled, and hit Control alt delete again and click lock. Notice that the lock screen is now available. If I move down to the welcome screen UI elements section, I can make changes to the content of the welcome screen. For example, I can switch off a selection or all of the icons featured on the welcome screen. So let's switch off the power icon and see what happened. Notice you would normally see a power icon next to the ease of use icon, but now it's hidden. This would be a good deterrent for anyone trying to maliciously restart the machine. Now they have to log back on before a shutdown can be carried out. Remember that if you're making customization changes within the Windows welcome lock or boot screens, then you must make sure that the changes are carried out with the UWF disabled. Otherwise, after a reboot, your changes will be discarded. The last part of the wizard that we'll touch on is the ability to switch on and off certain combination keys or keyboard shortcuts. There are three sections that control the management of key combinations. These are specific, shell and all keys. The specific tab deals with grouped areas of keys. So for example, the browser section deals with keys that are specific to internet browser navigation. Whereas security keys are focused on locking down the client session and limiting access. The shell tab manages control of the Windows key combinations, such as Win and R to bring up the Run dialog box, or Win and E to launch File Explorer. Finally, the All Keys tab is a complete list of all key combinations found in the previous two more specific tabs. For this demonstration, I'm going to use the Windows on-screen keyboard so you can see what keys I'm pressing on the client and also what happens once they've been disabled. 
you can get to the on-screen keyboard by going to the start menu, PC settings, ease of access, and move down to the keyboard options, and then switch the on-screen keyboard on. I'm just going to move the screen around a little bit just so we can see what's going on. I'm going to block the control alt delete combination in the security specific key area by selecting it in the table, clicking block and then OK. Now I'm going to click the Dell key first with the mouse and then press the control and alt keys so that all three keys are pressed. Normally this would take you to the welcome screen where you have the lock user and task manager options, but now it's blocked. If I go back and allow the key combination, and then with my on-screen keyboard, click Dell, then press the Control and Alt keys so that all three keys are pressed, you get the welcome screen displayed as normal. Finally, I'm going to the Shell Keys tab to show you how to block use of the Windows key and R to prevent the Run dialog box from being launched. First, scroll down the table until you find the Win plus R Run dialog entry and select it in the list. Then click Block and click OK. Now, if I hold down the Windows key and then click the R key, notice that the Run dialog box doesn't appear. If I go back and allow the key combination, and then with my on-screen keyboard, click down the Windows key, and then click the R key, notice that the Run dialog box now pops up. Remember that if you're making customization changes within keyboard filter screens, you must make sure that changes are carried out with the UWF disabled. But once you're happy with your results, you can go ahead and switch the UWF back on and your changes will be permanent. So the rule is, switch off UWF, make your changes, and then switch it back on again to preserve them. Otherwise, after a reboot, your changes will be discarded. This concludes today's demonstration and I'm sure it gave you an insight into the various ways to make your Windows 10 Thin Client a more secure and manageable one by using the UWF and UWF Wizard features. I hope you enjoyed the session and remember if you have any questions regarding this or related topics then please contact your Tenzig team or visit the website at www.tenzig.com.